so here's a video of the automated Essentia system that I designed in my TPPI2 world. This world I've been playing since the release of the open beta, basically. So I guess we're coming up on about a year now. I just play it when I've got time and feel like it, and I just keep adding to it. And I've been having a lot of fun with open computers and Thomcraft lately. So that's kind of how all this works. So I guess to show kind of where it all starts here... Um, all of this Essentia is stored inside these 64K uh, Essentia storage cells. This whole line here is filled up with those. And unfortunately, I, the methods don't exist to be able to query the ME network for Essentia types. And that's fine. So how I monitor everything is based off of these Essentia reservoirs. And you'll notice on the back here, got a bunch of smart cable and dense cable and computer cable and these are all hooked up to export buses that export the appropriate type of Essentia into the jars. Um, there's two, I think, yeah, I've got it divided in two basically because there are 56 jars and I couldn't run that all on one dense cable or one P2P bus. So there's two sets of dense cable each hooked up to a P2P bus which is connected up to this blue uh, which is the main trunk for this entire, well, basically everything I've got in here. This is all one massive building and I think right now I've used about 14 of the channels with every machine and import export whatever it's doing it's all hooked up to this blue line here and so maybe use a little more uh, 15 of the 32 channels right now and here are all the P2P buses connected up on the back side here anyway so that's how everything is pushed into these jars and what I decided to do was, okay, I want to monitor the level in these uh, essential reservoirs. So that's why each set of four and three on the corners has an adapter block hooked up to it. And so the server, um, got one server on the bottom here. It monitors all of this, basically. It is completely maxed out with components. You couldn't have one more component on this thing if you tried. It's got as many component buses as you can have. I could get one more adapter block or some other device like a database or something if for some reason I wanted to if I pulled the internet card out, but, you know, it's nice to have it from time to time. And they're just hooked up to these terminals because I can't use a monitor on there. If I found a way to unlink the terminal, I might be able to because I believe it still counts as a keyboard monitor when you have the remote terminal bound to it. Anyway, um, so that's that. And here's the terminal for it. Where'd it go? There it is. Um, so let me rebind it here. There we go. So this program is called uh, JARS. And first thing it does is it just makes a table containing all the jars where the key is the essential type and the value is the proxies which just makes it a lot easier to interact with the jars uh, ignore this top part and so what it does is it gets the it looks at the jar size which is just a manual variable up here it's 256 because I'm using the essential reservoirs now and so it looks at the amount of uh, essentia in there and if it's low then it creates a variable called deficit here and it'll just print a little message saying okay we need this many units of this type of essentia to fill it back up it sends out a network broadcast from the wireless network card and it just waits for a response which is just basically a ping from the other server saying okay um, I'm working on it and when it receives that message it will just wait a few seconds for all the essentia to process and then it will I can actually probably set this to two now um, it will check the jar size again or the uh, amount of essential in the jar against the jar size again just to make sure it all worked I just have it print error if by chance something was going on I don't really have any good error handling on this right now but that's just what it does so that's that part of this um, I won't start this just yet now the other terminal The other terminal is hooked up to the top server, which I still need to add in something to terminate the loop on a key press, but for now I just restart the things. Um, this one controls the furnaces. 
And so you'll see this has a couple tables of just manual keys and addresses because each of these has to be basically in the right thing. You can't just go through and use component.list and be able to tell what's what. So this is one, two, three, four, and same with these redstone blocks, one, two, three, four. And then it just creates a couple proxy tables. And we come down here and all this one does is it looks for the table size in each furnace, the table size of the aspects because if you do if you run this get aspects method on the furnace it will return all the aspects that are in the furnace and so we're just looking at the size so if there are any aspects in this furnace it knows that it's working and it turns off the um, formation plane through the redstone IO block here just a toggle bus and all this is is a five device ME network it's just drawing power from the main one through that fiber cable there that consists of an interface and formation planes and so if any items come in through this tesseract they uh, go into this interface and the only place they can go is through any of these formation planes that aren't being shut off through the toggle bus. So um, you'll actually notice this when it's working a channel will drop off as it's operating and then it'll come back on once the furnace goes. And that's really all this does. So I can run furnace again and one, two, three, four. It's just saying zero because there's nothing in any of these uh, furnaces right now. So that's all that one does. And I'll bring this one with me because we'll need it in a second here. Now, down here is this server. The one on the right does actually nothing right now. This one on the top, though, with the monitor on the left, is a uh, pretty big part of my network. It does a lot of stuff. Um, but mainly what it does, or at least in this, what it does is it handles the exporting of the um, ethereal essence to convert it into Essentia. If I can remember what I named it, I think it's this one. Yep, you notice they've got a bunch of different export buses and databases. I need to clean this up a bit. If I put start putting all this stuff in a table, I can put at least two of these functions just into one, and it'll just run through the table of different devices. But I have this function up here that I'm more worried about is called priority export. And you'll notice beyond just running this loop of these two export functions it also is listing for an event so um, if it receives a modem message which it would from the broadcast it stops what it's doing and executes this function up here which I've called priority export and it, um, the these variables are passed along through the um, event dot listen there so we look at the address the port the amount and the type the amount is the amount of essentia type is the type of essentia print a message here saying okay um, we need this much of this type of essentia and we got it from this address on this port and you'll notice right here I've got this table and that table is also unpacked up here that table is called essentialist and you'll notice I've got the type of a, the different types of Essentia and a number, and that number corresponds to the database slot. Of, is it this one? I think. Yeah, that's it. Corresponds to the database slot because one thing about open computers, and this is a major difference between open computers and computer craft, I believe. Open computers can't just magically move items. Um, Robots can interact with a lot of items and that kind of thing, but there is no way to access the actual NBT data. You can generate hash values of the NBT data and compare it, but I can't see the NBT data, and as far as I know, the name of the different types of essence is actually stored in the NBT data. So the whole reason this database exists is so I can say, okay, ethereal essence, that contains ORM is in slot number one and slot number two, slot number three, et cetera, et cetera. And these database entries are all used to configure the ME export buses. That is how Open Computers interacts with um, Applied Energistics. All of the export bus configuration is set through a database entry. And you'll notice these all have redstone cards in them, and that's so they export, or the exporting is controlled purely through the computer. None of it is done through Applied Energistics itself. So anyway, back to the program. Um, so that's what, let's see, what am I looking for here? 
that's what this is doing right here. So it uh, looks at the type of us, it gets the type, and so that's the key in that table. And it says, okay, for this essential type, you need to export from this slot of the database. And then we configure the priority export bus, which is its own export bus. It's facing down one is the inventory size of the inventory we're exporting into. We're in, or exporting into a test rack. That's, that only has one slot. I'm sorry, this isn't the size, it is the slot number. Obviously, a test rack only has one slot in it, so we export into slot number one. We look at the database of the priority. We look for the address of the priority export database and then the slot, which is whichever database slot we want to configure that export bus off of. And the number of exports is. Um, you look up here, I've got a variable called item to Essentia, and basically that's because um, one item of Ethereal Essence contains two Essentia, and you'll notice I've also floor it and I add half. And that's just in case it requests one Essentia, it doesn't try to perform half an export operation, it will always perform at least one. And then so we loop through here and repeat that export operation as many times as we need. If we put export cards or acceleration cards into the uh, export bus, I could export more at once. However, you run into issues with that. You cannot cleanly count your exports because of how open computers controls that inter that export bus. Um, sometimes you can get away with exporting multiple at once, but it doesn't always work. Plus, this wouldn't let me export neatly with just, okay, I only need two Essentia. Um, if I had acceleration cards in there, it might be exporting way more than I actually need. So then it just sends a little ping back to that server up there and says, hey, I've exported everything, and then it just prints a message that this whole thing is complete, and then it goes back to running its normal loop of export I think this one exports crap like all the leather armor and stuff I really can't do anything with. It just um, it sends that to the alchemical furnaces. And I've also got this function down here um, that sends stuff off to be repaired. Um, now, so that's that. I can actually go ahead and start this one up. Uh, what did I call it? Advanced export. So that one's running in. Let me just make sure it gets going here. It has to fill out a lot of databases with all these different items and stuff, so or a lot of tables from all the connected components and databases. So there it goes. So now it's just cleaning crap out of the network. Um, like I said, the stuff I really can't do anything with, like the leather, just goes into the alchemical furnaces to be turned into Essentia. And down here, I've got this little automated repair setup. This thing was a pain in the butt to get it set up exactly how I wanted it to, but it works perfectly now. So here's all these damaged items, and actually it just runs through the uh, items that are in good shape because they just get through here, and then they all get sent off to be uh, run through a high oven, and I get the gold or these. So it'll just throw these through here knowing that it can't repair them. Um, so we get some extra Terra Essentia it goes into the main system here through this, but I have it set up with its own little Prodicio uh, kind of distillation thing here it's just processing flint so it'll do its thing down here and um, I also get Essentia from or Ethereal Essence from here I've got these two uh, Ender IO spawners going down here and this is set up with a scythe so it does splash damage and I'm actually worried that Oh no, because when it gets into 50,000, it'll pull it out. Um, this automatically recharges, and the attractor pulls all the wisps down to right on top of this thing. We have a uh, sewer to convert the orbs to essence, and an item collector to pick up that. That all gets sent off to its respective places. Um, automatic charging system that repairs the tools, and I've got like looting three on this thing. It, these scythes are amazing for mob farms. The biggest reason I use a scythe is because it does splash damage. And if I just had a sword in there or something, it might only kill one mob at a time. But with this, it kills a whole big group of them, and you can see it over here. I've got another one for just a lot of other regular mobs, and uh, you'll notice how quickly it kills them because it just does kind of area of effect damage versus, um, you know, just doing a little bit at a time. Anyway, so there's that. I got one for ghasts. Uh, villagers and I can either leave them alive up here for trading or I can turn them into emeralds in the smeltery. This one I think does pecs or petches, however you pronounce that. 
So anyway, um, that's pretty much how this whole deal works. Again, uh, this server sends messages to this server. This server exports any needed items that come up here into the alchemical furnaces, which are controlled by this server. So um, I have, oh, actually one more thing. Let me get a couple void ingots here so I can make another reservoir to show how this works. Um, I need some jars. I think it needs, what, four jars? jars and I'm looking for void ingots. Those I'll go through. Those are all built in this thing here. Um, so I'll put that and that in there and then I need a buffer. Alright, and so we'll go ahead and send those items to the pedestal. Put this in here. Now, back to one more th part of this program. Um, you'll notice I have... Oh, I've got the terminal right here. I have something in here called, or not, it's just part of this uh, loop basically, and it says infusion in progress. The issue I was running into is if you are running an infusion, even the export buses won't keep one of these jars completely full while it's drawing the Essentia from the jar reservoir or whatever. It'll say like 255 or 254 or something. And the problem was is that this thing was running through checking all the different jars while the um, infusion was running. And I could have done it kind of a messy way by saying like, okay, if there's an item in here, then, you know, an infusion's running. But that's not really one how I wanted to set it up. And what I found was, I mean, basically I'm not a programmer. I knew I'm a truck driver. I do absolutely nothing about Lua or any programming at all before I started playing with this stuff. I just learned it as I went. And so in my just, you know, kind of learning all this, I was just hooking the adapter block up these different devices and looking at the methods that exist. And so I'm like, okay, well, I, there's, I can pull this table that contains all the different Essentia types. And so, um, I wanted to see what would happen if I put it on this runic matrix. And sure enough, um, when I dump this adapter block on here, you can actually see the Essentia table that shows the different aspects that are being stored in here while infusion is in progress. So that's what I check for. Um, I look to see if an infusion is in progress. And if it is, I disable all the checking of the jars. And it just prints a message saying infusion is in progress. So, yeah. So let me go ahead and get this going. And I won't actually start this right now. So I can make, uh, get this going here. But you'll notice, see how it says like 255, 256 while it's running? That was causing me a lot of grief. So once this uh, reservoir builds here, I will uh, put it back over there. And I'll empty these out at some point and use them down in my little armor repair thing as a buffer. As you can see, uh, the stability has been fine now, but I do tend to have accidents breaking these reservoirs and spewing flux everywhere, so that's why I have a slight excess of flux scrubbers in here, just in case. So, um, I will put this there. I think there's probably a little bit of Sano in the ME system that just went in there, but we need some. So when I run this jars program, Make sure the furnaces are running. Yep, they're running. So when I run jars here, it takes a second because it's got to run through and create all the proxy, the database or the table of all the proxies and stuff, and it takes a second. But uh, it's see, it's, it says it needs 254 un units of Sano, and it's waiting for a response. And now this guy down here interrupts what it's doing and starts exporting the Sano into these alchemical furnaces. And you can see this thing's dropping channels as stuff's getting processed here and uh, it starts filling up. See, my TPS is fine, but I, when these furnaces are running, I kill my freaking uh, FPS. But, uh, so it's still waiting for it to send the message back saying, hey, I went ahead and exported all the items you need. There it goes, response received. 
waiting for it to process, and that's it, and the screen just goes blank. And if I could do, oh, I'll make one more of those uh, void ingot, void metal ingot. Oh, there it is. Two of those a buffer and jars. that put those into there put them back in here this is going to be my next thing to automate but that's coming up so now if i run this you'll see it's printing a message it says infusion in progress and so that means that it's not going to worry about checking to see what's inside these jars and whatnot while it's uh running the actual infusion so that's about it for this thanks for watching